Welcome back to part 3 of my complete Amani guide. In the last part, I talked about Amani's talents, cards, and items from the store. Now, in part 3, I'm going to talk about the advanced nuances to Amani's kit. Let's go! I love Paladins, but it's a buggy mess. Every champion has some bugs. Amani is no exception. Let's begin with the less severe bugs, and then work our way up to the game-breaking ones. Amputation When a match ends in Paladins, all champions lose their weapons on the victory slash defeat screen. In the case of Amani, she loses her arms. Hot hands! Occasionally, after casting a fireball, the charging effect will stay in Amani's hands, regardless of stance. To rid yourself of this, simply switch back to fire and toss out another primary. Frostbomb Mana Generation in theory, the Frost Bomb should generate mana for each enemy it hits. But in practice, the Frost Bomb will generate mana for one enemy max. Even if you tag the entire enemy team with a fully charged Frost Bomb, you will only get 30% mana from the one target. Splitting Ice Exception Splitting Ice won't proc the bouncing shot on Anara's Warder's field. Even if you attack Anara herself, the Brock won't take any damage. Mana Jip in Ice in Ice Stance, if you tap to use your primary fire, you will only fire one Ice Shard when at full mana. This will still eat up the whole mana bar. Mana Jip in Fire Normally in Fire Stance, when you have a fireball charged up as you hit max mana, you will end up shooting two fireballs 0.5 seconds apart from each other. However, sometimes you will be jipped on your second insta shot, and the mana bar will be reset. This bug is very annoying for Fire Stance users, since the mana gain is so slow in that stance. Hey, Macarena. This is Amani's most common bug in my opinion. Occasionally, when you use Inferno Cannon, you will get a no-retch. If you were airborne while casting, you will remain in the air and can float around for quite a while. If you try to cast your Pyroball, Amani will begin doing the Macarena Arm Flail. What your allies and enemies will see is Amani stuck floating in the Infernal Cannon pose, but nothing is happening. Supposedly to fix this, all you have to do is swap to Ice Stance. I wouldn't know, however, because I think this bug is funny, and I always try to float off into another dimension when it happens. And last, and by far the weirdest bug on this list, is the Wall Ultimate Death. I've only had this happen to me once, but it was during a stream, and you can see exactly what happened here. Alright, you know what? Going in. Oh, this is very epic to watch. Why is she bouncing? Wait, what killed- I killed myself?! Wait, what just happened?! Yeah, you killed yourself. How did I kill myself?! So, normally, Amani can't ult near walls. In this case, I guess I was able to bypass that. Amani casts the ult while bouncing, and then continues to do so. The ult goes off as normal, I get a kill, and then my health dips to zero, causing me to die to my own ultimate. I was even granted a double kill for killing myself. Since this, I have never experienced the bug again, but I felt it was worth sharing anyway. Elemental Shift 0.5 second animation. I put this one last because I'm not sure if this is a bug or not. If you use Elemental Shift as you're charging a fireball, the fireball will shoot out, and you will swap stances at the same time. Normally, Elemental Shift has a 0.25 second cast time. However, when swapping in this method, the cast time is 0.5 seconds. I tested it, and you can even see the slower animation when it happens. Again, I'm not sure if this is intended or not, but I figured I would bring it up in this section. Now, let's chain attacks together in the combo section. We'll start with the easiest and work our way up to the more challenging combos. Fire Burst Combo Two fireballs, back to back, for a 2000 damage burst. To initiate this combo, simply begin charging your first fireball while nearing full mana. Then, once you fire, your mana will be capped out and you can instantly shoot the second fireball. This is a super easy and super consistent combo when using Mana Rift. Firefly Combo This is my favorite combo to use as Amani, and it's very straightforward. Initiate the combo by using the Frostfire Glide to gain a vantage point, and then rain down on the enemy with your Inferno Cannon. 
do be careful since this combo is pretty predictable. A fun way to spice it up is to act like you're going to retreat with your glide, and then turn around at the last second for the cannon. Frost Cannon Combo Initiate this combo by hitting the enemies with your Frost Bomb, then swap to Fire Stance and burn them down with your Inferno Cannon. You have to be quick when swapping, otherwise the enemies will get away. Do note that this combo does not apply Cauterize, so it's best used when little healing is involved. Bolt Blast Combo Initiate this combo by hitting the enemy with a Frost Bolt, then swapping to Fire Stance at full mana for a quick Pyreball. This combo deals 1410 damage, but requires you to hit full mana from that initial Frost Bolt. If you don't reach full mana, then you will have to charge up your Pyreball, which screws up the combo and can get you killed. Firebolt Combo This combo is initiated by landing a fully charged Pyreball, then swapping to Ice for a quick Frost Bolt. The combo will deal 1410 damage, but can be modified with full mana. If you're in max mana when in Ice, after the Fireball, you could shoot out the double shot of ice for a combo of 1820. However, if you want higher damage than that, you could start with the fire burst combo, then swap to ice for the frost bolt for a combo of 2410. This chain combo can kill most standard health champions even with HP cards. I know this is affected by that 0.5 second internal cooldown of fireballs that I mentioned, but I feel that the damage comes out fast enough to still be considered a combo. And last of our combos is the most inconsistent and tricky to pull off, the Firebomb combo. Before you begin, make sure you're at full mana. Initiate the combo by landing a Frost Bomb, then swap to Fire Stance for an instant Fireball. This combo totals 1800 damage and can be followed up on with an Inferno Cannon if necessary. I consider this to be Imani's most tricky combo simply because it requires you to hit the Frost Bomb and then be full mana for the instant Fireball. If you're at full mana, it's always better to follow up on a Frost Bomb and Fire Stance, since a single Fireball deals more damage than the double shot Frost Bolts. As mentioned earlier, if you don't kill your target, you have the Inferno Cannon to aid in cleanup. Let's turn it up with some advanced strats you can pull off with Imani's kit. Frost Bolts. Honestly, for the bolts, there isn't much strategy outside of just keep shooting. One little tip, however, is that the slow from the frost bolts stacks with other friendly slows, but is affected by diminishing returns. Basically, if the target is affected by a 50% slow, and then a 15% slow from a frost bolt, you would expect the total slow to be 65%. Well, because of diminishing returns, the actual slow will be in the 55 to 58% range. Still, comboing slows makes it even harder for an enemy to escape, and can be just the edge your team needs for the elimination. Pyeball. Like the Frostbolt, the main strategy is to just keep shooting. Because of the projectile size, I find that some of the best locations to use the fireballs are in small choke points. The big projectiles from these can also be abused to hit slim, airborne targets. If you lead your shot appropriately, you can reliably hit champions like Drogos and Vora with ease. And if you have a slight high ground advantage, you can reliably hit frontlines from over their shields. One last thing to mention is that there is a notable downside of having gigantic projectiles, that being that it's almost impossible to thread the needle in clumped up teamfights. Enemies and deployables can eat up a shot meant for someone else in the back. Crossfire Glide Make sure you cancel the ability early once you're in position, so you can get that cooldown started ASAP. When retreating, try your best to get behind cover quickly. However, if you're in the open, one tactic you could pull off is pretending to jump off the map, only to activate your Frostfire Glide and hover around the edge. Just make sure you don't get too close to the kill zone, and leave yourself enough time to escape. When pushing in aggressively, try to give yourself some height with the glide. This will give you a better angle to strike from. Inferno Cannon As mentioned earlier, the Inferno Cannon is best used in the air. While you are more vulnerable, you will have a better vantage point and the enemy will have to take their eyes off of your team to look up and return fire. Even though I advise against using the cannon on mobile targets, in some cases the precise hitscan beam may be just what you need to pin down a flanker jumping all over the place. 
In some scenarios, it can be worth it to waste the Inferno Cannon to bait out the enemy's defensive abilities. As mentioned earlier, you could track invisible targets with the on-screen damage numbers provided by the cannon. When attacking stealth champions, try to initiate with the flamethrower and follow the numbers around for an easy kill. On top of piercing through enemies, the Inferno Cannon pierces through all deployables except for Inara's impasse. Look to damage both enemies and their deployables at the same time by positioning yourself accordingly. This tip is especially handy against Ios, who usually try to hide behind Luna. Going back in post, I can't believe that I forgot to mention that you can use the Inferno Cannon to save yourself from environmental kills. The 3 seconds in which the cannon is active can be enough time to get your glide back from its cooldown. Frostba! You can use the bomb to kill or damage enemies far in the backline. Just make sure you tilt your aim upwards so you can account for the bomb's trajectory. Don't be afraid to toss out a risky bomb like this every now and then. You'll be surprised with what you can catch. In some cases, it might be better to hold your bomb until the enemy begins retreating. The bomb can cancel most movement skills even if they begin their wind-up animations. Tanks like Rom and Ash waste their cooldowns and are sitting ducks if you root them during the animation. On the topic of movement skills, look to stop enemy engagements with the Frost Bomb as well. Again with Rom for example, if you see him barreling towards your backline, try to hit him with the Frost Bomb on his way in to throw off his positioning and keep your team safe. The Frost Bomb is great at keeping enemies stationary for when your team is looking for an opening to attack. If you see that an ally has an impactful ultimate ready, you should try to land a big Frost Bomb to guarantee that the ultimate gains value. Another great use for the bomb is aiding your team with kill confirmations. For example, if you see the enemy support and your flank in the backline duking it out, you could hit the Frost Bomb and aid your flanker in getting that kill. One last really cool advanced tech with the Frost Bomb is that the root affects polymorphs. For Pip's Evil Mojo, this makes it so much easier to kill the chickens, and for Moji's Bon Appetit, it prevents the snack from escaping its fate. Dragon's Call One of my favorite advanced strategies with Dragon's Call is purposefully ulting in a bad spot and baiting the enemies to come to me. You can actually defend Amani's body against direct damage by hovering low with the dragon. Make sure you are holding the backwards directional key, as even without button commands, Amani's dragon will slowly glide forward. The body blocking technique won't work against enemies with AoE damage, so don't use this against blasters. On top of defending your own body, you can actually keep the dragon low to defend your teammates if they need it. Otherwise, it's a lot better to attack from the air. When you're in the air, it's easier to track enemies, and you can also ignore most enemy shields. Another strategy for this ultimate, and one that usually guarantees success, is pushing up with the dragon when your team is about to cap the second point in Siege. Most enemies will be so preoccupied with defending the cart that they won't be able to react accordingly to your dragon. You can also use the ultimate to bait out defensive abilities and defensive ultimates like Immortal from the enemy team. One last use for Dragon's Call is forcing the enemy to retreat and keeping them in spawn if possible. Some players get so scared when the dragon is summoned on the field. These same players can sometimes end up back in their spawn room. At that point, keep the dragon hovering about to intimidate them until the duration is over. No Paladin's Champion is without their counters. Luckily, most of your counters can be outplayed with decent positioning and patience. In general, Amani's counters are characters with crowd control who can also negate most of her damage. Hello everyone, and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about the top 10 counters to Amani. Okay, seriously, here they are in my eyes. Amani's top 10-ish counters. Well, there's actually 12. I'm just going to cover why these 12 champions are strong against Amani. We'll cover fighting back against them in the Tips vs. Every Champion section at the end. Starting at the bottom, we have Victor, Tyra, and Vivian. All for the same reason. They're rapid-fire hitscan champions who can easily track and kill Amani during her Frostfire Glide. Do note that all three of these champs can fight back and kill you easily during your Infernal Cannon. Next is the snipers, Strix and Kinesa. Both of you play in the backline. They have hitscan attacks, you don't. Many times, they can kill you or reposition when you try approaching with the Frostfire Glide. Zippy, Ninny's Koga, and Zin follow suit. 
both of these champions have ways to easily avoid your secondary abilities. With Koga, it's his dashes, and with Zin, it's his... well, everything. Both of these champs can also do a lot of damage up close, and if they can't kill Imani, they will waste a lot of her cooldowns instead. An end to the burst meta. Nearing the top of the list are the burst ba babies, Cassie and Leon. Both of these champs play at similar ranges to you, but have significantly more burst damage. Leon can take out 800 health without even looking at you, and Cassie can take out over 1000 health just by mashing two buttons together at once. Now, Amani's second and third strongest counters in my eyes are Pip and Buck for similar reasons. Both of these champions have decent burst damage and decent mobility, but on top of that, they both have strong and easy to land slows, which severely hinders the usefulness of Frostfire Glide. To further set them over the edge, they both have significant self heals, which screws over Amani's combo potential and time to kill. I put Pip higher than Buck, since his healing potion can be used on himself and teammates as well. Having the enemy team get topped off with a healing potion after you hit a large frost bomb is so heartbreaking. And Amani's top counter in my eyes is Terminus without a doubt. Everything Amani can do, Terminus can shut down with one ability. Want to spam some frost bolts? Siphon. Got an opening for a huge frost bomb? Siphon. Want to roast the enemy support with your Inferno Cannon? Siphon. Further cementing his position here, Terminus also has a slow slash stun with the Shatterfall. This gets even worse if he's running a damage reduction build. Good luck taking this guy down when he's spamming Siphon in your face and taking reduced damage when you get an opening. In my eyes, Terminus is Amani's only hard counter. There are times where you can outplay him, but in some games, it's almost impossible. While every champion can work well with Amani, I want to bring up a few special cases. Starting with the flank class, in general, Amani is great at helping flanks clean up kills they might be struggling to get on their own. The only notable synergy in this class is with Eevee. Eevee's snowstorm slowing and crippling the enemy makes it so easy for Amani to follow up with her own damage. You can even help your Eevee catch multiple enemies in the snowstorm with a well-timed frost bomb. Next is the damage class. Like the flankers, Amani is great at helping a fellow damage get a confirmation on a kill. Notable champs in this category are Bomb King and Tiberius. Both of these champs have very noticeable crowd control in their base kit, which again, makes Amani's main job of securing kills much easier. Now things start to get interesting with the supports. Honestly, all of the supports synergize extremely well with Amani, but I want to bring special attention to Genos with Luminary. In Fire Stance, two Pyreballs deal 2000 damage. With the 15% boost from Luminary, that damage goes up to 2300. With the Fire Burst combo, you can execute 34 of the current 46 characters. On top of this, the Void Grip makes for easy pickings with your Frost Bolts or Inferno Cannon. Other notable supports include Corvus and Pip, who can bail Amani out with some long-range heals if she decides to play Risky. Both have ultimates that are easy to follow up on as well. And last up, the front lines. Unlike other classes, there's a few tanks that are less optimal for Amani. Those being Rom and Ruckus. Both these tanks ditch the team protection in favor of dealing damage. For Amani, that is a significant detriment as you will now have to play around cover more than usual. Anyways, onto synergies. Anara's all-around zone control really helps Amani in securing kills. As I already stated, Seismic Crash is the easiest ultimate to follow up on as Amani. Next up is Makoa. His shield covers the most ground, and therefore is the most reliable for Amani to use. The hook is also great at setting up kills for Amani and the rest of her team. And last of the notable tanks is Torvald. Okay, maybe I'm spoiled by my duo friend Sarah being a Torvald main, but the combo works so well. Torvald's bubble allows Amani to play so risky and get away with positioning mistakes she would otherwise be punished for. The commonly used Eldritch Speed card turns Amani into a Mazda as she goes zoom zoom across the map. The silence from Nullify is also super helpful in those duels against pesky flankers. Last, but certainly not least, is that Torvald is one of the best allies to watch over you as you use your ultimate. Alrighty, that's part 3. In the next and final part, 
I'll be going over Amani tips for matchups versus every champion. I hope you enjoyed this part and found it helpful. And I look forward to seeing you in the finale of the Imani Guide. I'm Yellow Ninja, and peace.